Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, I'm really glad to see all, you all joining us for this uh, TechNet21 webinar series with uh, UNICEF on estimating the cost of a national immunization strategy, NIS. This session is interpreted into French. Donc cette session est interprétée en français. To listen to French, click on the globe icon at the bottom of the Zoom window, then select French. You can also remove the original sound to listen to the French interpreter only. I'm going to say that in French as well. Um, pour uh, écouter uh, l'interprétation en français, vous pouvez cliquer sur le globe qui est en bas de l'écran uh, de la fenêtre de Zoom. Vous pouvez choisir français et vous pouvez uh, aussi, si vous le voulez, uh, retirer le, le, le son en, en arrière-plan de, de, de la voix originale du présent, des présentateurs pour pouvoir écouter uniquement la version en français. Don't hesitate to tell us in the chat room where you're from and uh, for which organization you work. We'd love to know. Um, during this presentation, you can ask your questions uh, in the Q&A box or in the chat box, but preferably in the Q&A box, please. Um, you don't hesitate to ask your questions at any point. They will be answered at the end of, the, of this presentation. Then, um, if you have any technical issue, please use the chat box. I will try to assist you uh, as much as possible. As usual, this session is recorded and we'll share the links to the video as well as the slides by email and on the TechNet21 website. Um, well, now I will let Ula Griffith from UNICEF uh, introduce the presenters and start this, uh, pre this presentation. Ula, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this webinar. Um, my name is Ula Griffiths, and I lead the immunization financing team in New York. And I'm here joined with um, Cher Rugard and Eric Laurent, who are UNICEF consultants and who's been working a lot on NIS in the past few years. And Saurabh Agarwal from the Community Systems Foundation, who is really the brain behind all the technical issues um, of this new application. So next slide, please, Saurabh. So this is the agenda. I'm just gonna give a brief background and introduction to NIS.cost. Um, then I'm gonna hand it over to Sorab, who's gonna show you the application um, and how, and also talk about how you will use it and how you get access. Um, then Sharu and Eric are gonna talk about some early lessons learned from countries we have. Uh, due to COVID, as you can just imagine, the piloting and using it has just, has not happened as we envisioned. Um, but we hope that we can soon be able to really do some proper um, piloting because with, with a tool like this is often you, you use it and then you need to make adaptations, etc. So we hope in 2022 we can get that going. Then we will leave 15 minutes for questions and answers. Next slide. So since 2017, we have done a lot of evaluations, assessment of how um, strategic planning, so multi-year planning, it's really five-year planning. For the CMYP, they were almost always five years. So the new NIS, we also um, expect almost all countries to do a, make a five-year plan. So the team um, around us and with UNICEF and with WHO have done a lot of like stock taking. And as you can see all these documents here, um, where we've looked at how do we think it's going. So this new approach have been built on that we have evaluated for the last two decades, how things have been working with the CMYP. Next slide. So all these documents you can find that I just showed you in the other slides, you can find here on immunizationeconomics.org on the UNICEF page. Um, there is a page that's called National Planning and Budgeting. And there you can find all these evaluations that I, that I just mentioned. Next slide. So new guidance for the NIS was issued by WHO in August, 2021. And there's also a frequently asked questions uh, document there, as you can see, and you can find it in the link. So this is a replacement for the CMYP guidance. Um, that's, that was the last uh, document of that was from 2013. Um, so the key differences between NIS and CMYP is that NIS really aims to be more strategic. And this is also why the word strategy is in the, in the word. 
um, we saw that many CMYPs were more like extended annual operational plans um, with a lot of bullet points of need to be done, but we really want the NIS to be like a strategic document for what how the program should aim to go towards in the next five years. Also, the NIS should be feasible, and this is where the NIS.cost is important. We don't want to have all these big visions and that 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 won't happen because resources are not there. So we're really trying to make it feasible within the resource constraints. Also, the document should be relatively short, maximum 30 pages. Um, again, just a clear strategic document and not really an, an we need, you still need annual op operational plans, but that shouldn't be mixed with this NIS. Next slide. So this is how the NIS.cost, the front page look. Um, which Sora will take you through. Next slide. So the approach that we, we decided to take, there was a steering committee. Uh, we met for two years to try and discuss how the new approach should be. So really replacing the old CMYP costing tool. Um, first of all, we, we really think it's important that you do NIS.cost alongside development of the NIS. It shouldn't be as happened before a lot with the CMYP. It was something that was filled in afterwards. So as I said, we want NIS to, um, to be feasible and therefore you need to know alongside it, okay, how much is gonna cost to do this, this strategy that we wanna do. So we should do it alongside. Um, we really also want it to be an approach, not just a costing tool where you just put in some numbers. It's really a whole approach because the important thing is to link it with the budget. So, so it's an approach where you where you need to look at okay, how much uh, was 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 being budgeted for immunization in last year, the year before, and how much was executed, and then this whole approach needs to be linked because the danger is that we have the costing estimates just sitting there and not being used. Um, also, NIS is closely linked to what's actually in the NIS. We are not costing the program. We are costing what is in this NIS documents. Um, and then it's not only about cost. As I said, it's about budgeting process and past expenditures and financing sources. Next slide. So specific features that are different for the CMYP costing tool. Um, so we have structured the um, application according to the standard EPI um, review. Uh, so this, the standard, standard components of the EPI. Um, the issue with shared costs was debated a lot in the steering committee um, because in the old CMYP costing tool, sh some shared costs was included, not all. And there's been a lot of sort of confusion about this and it, the numbers haven't been used a lot. So we decided we are not going to do shared cost. We're really only going to focus on what the EPI manager has control of. However, shared costs are of course important and they can still be put in there, but they don't have to be costed. And then the application has been done so that you can say whether it's shared cost or not. So shared cost are something like human resources. As we know, health workers do many other things that immunization. So they are of course shared across programs. Um, also, resources are categorized according to whether they're continuing or new. So like what's new in this strategy? And then in the end, you can see what does it cost to do anything that's new? I think that was my last slide before I hand over to Sorb. Next slide. I have there are many slides in this because you're going, of course gonna get this slide set afterwards. So there are several slides about how you actually access um, the application. So I will say a bit more about this, but is again on uh, immunizationeconomics.org where there is a link and you need to email, um, send the email there and then you will get access because then you are gonna get a specific for your country and the country you wanna work on, um, a specific um, version. But over to you, Sora, thank you. Thank you, Ula. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Saurabh Agarwal. I work with the uh, Community Systems Foundation. Uh, at the end of 2020, we received uh, you know, this assignment from UNICEF to work uh, on, on the development of the uh, NIST.com. Uh, we received an uh, initial version that was in my cell and uh, we thought, uh, the, we can take an approach through Google Sheet, which will help with uh, improving the interface 
and the data entry streamline and uh, the user step by step. So this is uh, this is how the application looks in Google Sheets and uh, the what a user needs is a Google account to access this application. So in, in, the, in the recent country implementation, we have also created a country specific Google account that an administrator can have to access this application. And then they become the owner to share this applications with the other resources in the country who would like to contribute and work on the application. So, the Google Sheet allows you to uh, access the application through a Google account. Another inherent feature of the Google Sheet is to is that it tracks, uh, you know, the version. Anyone who edits in the application, there is an inherent uh, tracking uh, for any changes that has been made by the user, and you can even uh, restore or create a copy of a previous versions. Now, uh, talking about the various modules and how to navigate application, the, in the application, there are various buttons, which when you click, it will take you to the relevant sheets. So we have used Google app scripts in the background to do the coding in order to help with the background logic and uh, uh, for so as soon as you click on a button, for example, if I click on a button to the setup module of this application, at, for the initial step, there may be a pop-up that requires you to do the script authorization. The slides will have uh, steps on how to authorize the script. And uh, once you do that authorization, uh, set you up on how to use the application. Now we are on the setup module where the country specific customization be done and change that are relevant in your country context. There are certain that require, for example, uh, we can go in the country data tab and uh, choose your country's currency and your exchange rate. Uh, one thing to note is the any any cells that are highlighted in yellow are the ones that will be user input driven. That is a common feature that you will find in all the sheets. So, and uh, as this is a five year exercise, some countries you may uh, your year one may be 2021 or it may be 2022 and so on and so forth. So the the year value can be changed in the setup module to navigation on all the pages you will see home or back once you click on home it will take you to the main home page but if you click on back you go to the previous uh, the sub module the setup module that we were in previously so again coming back to the main page of setup module we have this other uh, uh, sub pages here wherein the you is in their country specific uh, information. So for example, demographic data, which becomes very much relevant in the vaccine cal uh, calculation because uh, we have to map when we come to the vaccine uh, calculation page, we will show you that each vaccine map to its own cohort or target population to arrive at the, the specific cost for vaccine. Therefore, you definitely need to have the demographic data to do the costing for vaccine. Similarly, there are various rate tables that gets used in the costing process. There is a device data rate table, cold chain data uh, rate table, unit cost. We'll, we'll not go into detail of each of these tables because of uh, you know, the limited time allocated. Then there is and other data sheet where our various uh, drop down values that get used across the different modules which can definitely uh, can be changed and adapted in country context when we come to the roadmap module you will see that uh, has three levels but the uh, each country can 
name their levels differently in the application. The default uh, levels are objective, main intervention, and activity. These can be changed to outputs, intervention, or activity, or output strategies, or activity, what, whichever or whatever is relevant in your country context. So again, talking about navigation, you can click on back or you can click on home button and it takes you back to the home page. So this is what we thought was the major uh, change that uh, we thought would help user in uh, doing the data entry because in Excel, you tend to see a lot uh, and that kind of overwhelms you. And we've thought about designing the application through a linear approach where you can work on one module at a time. So the initial module that uh, we need to begin with is the roadmap. If you're in your country, your framework has already been developed, you can key in the framework uh, in the framework sub page of the roadmap, wherein you, you, you need to select your objective and then your you know, one objective can have more than one main intervention. One main intervention can have more than one activity and so on and so forth. We'll show you how this looks uh, 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 in a version where we have a data entry, uh, a dummy data that has already been entered. Again, uh, the aspect of the roadmap module is to ca uh, capture dimension against each of, uh, you know, these activities wherein once you are in the dimension, you need to specify, uh, you know, where, what is the priority of an activity? What is, uh, whether it is a high or a medium or a low priority activity, what type of activity it is, whether it is a routine activity or as, a, or a new activity. All of these selections will help us in the report module when we want to look at cost, for example, just Activities. What are what are the cost as a, uh, as opposed to uh, the routine activities? Let me switch to quickly switch to the version where we have some data populated so that it becomes easier to interpret this. So once you are in in uh, framework, uh, this is how you would uh, populate your data. Wherein, for example, the first objective improved enabling environment for immunization services. The first main intervention is pro provide policy guidance. And then there could be two sub activities for this particular main intervention. This objective can also have main intervention. And how the tool has been designed, it designed is that the costing needs to be done at the lowest node, which is at the activity level. And uh, the tool can have detailed costing for each of this, these activities. So uh, again, uh, one thing that is very essential when we are on the roadmap page is that when we talk about vaccines, we need to create in our NIST, NIST framework uh, individual activities for each of these vaccines, because then the tool allows you to uh, you know, capture coverage information, which may vary from uh, for, for each vaccine and allows you to do the costing uh, of What you will see uh, similar in most of the what modules, once you change anything in the tool, and for example, if I, I type in vaccine that we need to add to the NIST framework, uh, the tool will tell you that you have made some changes and at an activity level, you need to map the EPI sub component. So we need to select that. And then tool is already highlighting that you have made some changes and uh, the recalc button needs to be clicked upon. So this is a common feature that you will see in all the sub modules of the application. One, the, the recalc uh, button executes, you will see that uh, uh, the color for the, the background color of this goes back to the normal and your edited uh, uh, notification. So, and now if I can just take you to the, the dimensions. So roadmap is a very key module because this kind of drives the entire application on what 
we are costing, which activities we are costing. And for example, we have just we just added an MMR uh, vaccine, uh, and then we need to kind of specify whether it is a high priority, whether it is a routine or a new vaccine, and uh, at what level it is being delivered, national or subnational, whether it is a shared cost or not, and then the costing line item is of uh, of uh, significance because this determines how the costing will be done because. Costing for vaccines is very specific a way of doing costing, but all the other activities are uh, costed uh, in, a, in a different, in a generic way. So again, I've just clicked on calc button to capture the changes that I've uh, just made here. Uh, once this runs through, we will uh, go to the costing modules and, uh, and uh, look at how the costing is done. So in the costing module, again, you know, because the NIST, NIST framework would be a lengthy, lengthy uh, uh, sheet and it will have uh, a lot of activities in it. And the activities can be grouped by different EPI uh, components and their subcomponents. You can either do the costing by choosing, you know, uh, filtering out the activities by the EPI components, or you could look at one intervention at a time and then do the costing for it. For example, if I click on supply management vaccine, the costing prepare, uh, sheet will prepare itself and show you only the, uh, the vaccines uh, that you would want to cost. For example, here, the, you know, because it was a brief dummy data, you're already seeing costing done for these, uh, these vaccines. But for MMR, we, we just added it, so we don't see that. So how do we cost out MMR? We'll need to click on costing details and it will take you to the costing uh, page where you can key, uh, key in the, the costing uh, information for uh, the, the vaccines. Just, just give me a second. So once you click on costing details, Use, what the user gets to see is the, the vaccines that they had entered in, the, um, in, the, in their NIST framework. And then the user needs to map the relevant information uh, that are needed for costing out the vaccines. Uh, what is the target population as that comes from the demographic page? You can also map the vaccine code, vial sizes, doses and schedule. What is the syringe that will be used to administer the vaccine, whether liquid, lyophilized, and accordingly, if there is a need for reconstitution syringe, because all of this will get calculated and have impact in the of the vaccine. And what is the, uh, who's the supplier, whether it is an international supplier or a domestic supplier, whether it is a, a routine or, or an SIA, and what's the wastage percent, the currency, the price per dose, and so on and so forth. So this will get you the vaccine cost per dose. And then when you go back on, on the main uh, costing page, here is where, where you specify what is the expected coverage for each of uh, the five years of your, of your NIS uh, uh, plan. So this is uh, how you do the costing for vaccines. Uh, but if you wanted to look uh, and uh, do the costing for activities which are other than vaccines, you can again, uh, you know, go one intervention at a time. For example, in this sheet, we have, um, we can choose the, the provide policy guide, guidance uh, intervention that we had entered. And, uh, you know, again, the same process, you can select each of uh, any of the one activity that you want to do the costing for. For example, in this case, if we select EPI policy implementation guideline review meeting, uh, again, clicking on costing details will take you to the page where the detailed costing for uh, you, 
the EPI policy implementation guidelines and review meeting can be done. For example, in, for this particular, uh, we've entered the, the cost param parameter as training cost and what is the costing method uh, in gradient approach. And you know it can be as many as much granular as you want. And what this page works like a slate. You know, once you have done costing for one activity, uh, go back to the main page and uh, select the next and uh, to do the costing for the, the the next activity. For example, next one. This one we haven't done any costing for, so therefore the information is blank. But when you click on costing details, you get a blank page to do the costing for the EPI SO, SOPs review meetings, and you can be as much granular and as much detailed oriented uh, that you want to capture the costing. So for the, the, for the limited time for this presentation, I'll just quickly move on to the next few modules. We've just looked at roadmap where we capture the NIS and define the activities that we need to cost. And then we looked at the costing module where the actual costing of those activities do. The costing module allows you to filter and view the, uh, the activities by various main intervention or through EPI subcomponents. The next module is budgeting, wherein you can compare the costs calculated in the previous module, uh, in, the, in the costing module, and compare it with the the, uh, the immunization uh, costs for the previous two years and see uh, see how 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 what's the difference as compared to the prior years. So the mostly the thing that you're doing here is capturing your budget uh, uh, by by different government from the prior years and then try and compare uh, you know what it means in in uh, in uh, for the the upcoming plan. Okay, Move, uh, moving on to the next module, which is the financing module. The finan financing module is basically uh, allowing you to capture activity level where the funding will come from, whether it is going to come from go uh, whether it is uh, uh, country co-financed or whether it is coming from various other uh, agencies. And what you can do is at an activity level, you can provide funding uh, for one year at a time. We understand that, uh, uh, you know, from recent experiences, we have funding information may just be available for, uh, you know, first uh, couple of years. It may not be available uh, for all five years, but the tool uh, allows you the uh, opportunity to enter financing or funding information um, for uh, at an activity level by uh, you know each year right so this is the how the funding page looks like wherein you can capture funding information uh, at an activity level and kind of highlights you which activity uh, is uh, uh, high priority, medium priority, low priority. And uh, you, know, you can enter the financing information for, by government, uh, subnational, various other agencies or country financed. And you can do it for one year or uh, you know, multiple years at a time. Other than that, uh, in the tool, you have different uh, reports that you can view. Uh, once the data is captured, you can uh, view the reports. Uh, this is a report that can be printed in PDF. Uh, it has uh, some of the graphs and charts that have been pre predefined, automatically populated once the data entry is done. Uh, other reports that are very interesting are, for example, if you just want to look at, uh, uh, you know, the costing the, uh, for the next five years by the EPI components and their sub, it, it can show you. And similarly, you can also look at a uh, uh, report by roadmap, uh, you know, objectives uh, and at main intervention. It, 
happens uh, a lot in your discussions with government agencies where you can just focus which main interventions they would want to implement and what it is going to kind of cost them to implement that for things. So I, I know this is a, a very crash course, but uh, every, uh, uh, you know, in, in the recent country implementation, it takes us around two to three hours to uh, give a thorough uh, orientation uh, on how to use the application. Um, uh, at the end of the presentation, you will get the slide on how to reach out and ask, uh, request for access to a country specific version, wherein we share two versions, one with a demo and a dummy data that you can play with, and then uh, another version, which is a completely blank version that can be used for your country implementation. I'll, I'll uh, uh, stop now and uh, request my colleague, uh, Eric and Charu to share their experience for uh, of country implementation. Thank you, Saurabh. Can you put the slide so we can switch to the country experience? So next slide, please. So yes, just just uh, we're going to bring, present you a few country experience and, uh, and Charu will take you to uh, the best practice. So up to now, uh, we've been, um, let's say, I think quite, quite some experience last year, although I mentioned that this was still with the COVID time, so challenging a little bit. So for your information, WHO HQ is tracking uh, the development of the NIS the, and the access to the NIS cost. So we're trying to, to understand where we're standing. Nine country initiated the NIS development. Three more are currently asking for support and many more are normally in 22 supposed to be going through. Uh, a country received detailed orientation, so Sorab did a great job. Three country finalized already their NIS. I was supporting Papua New Guinea and Cambodia and, and Charu was supporting Tanzania. Plus Zimbabwe and Uzbekistan, they have completed uh, their detailed costing. So that's quite some expense that we're going to present to you. And, uh, for most of them at this stage, we got international experts which were supporting both the, the programmatic and the financing. For Cambodia, on the top of that, we were contracting a national economist to collect uh, the financial data. Next slide, please. Okay, lesson learned. Papua New Guinea, Cambodia, and a bit Tanzania. Um, first country to develop last year. Um, we were using the NIS cost only in Cambodia and Tanzania. It was not ready at the time for PNG. We were using the pilot phase. Positive outcome, I would say many stakeholders and including all the province, in fact, participated in the NIS development and on the financial side, costing financial. Um, the approach uh, was well received. In fact, the new approach, as Ula insists, this is not only tools, this is an approach, the, the NIS and the NIS costing, and it was well received by many stakeholders, national and international. So I think we are on a good track with the NIS uh, approach. For Cambodia, um, as you know, and many other countries will have their FPP. Gavi is really also looking into the NIS to be uh, properly implemented with good uh, NIS um, costing results. Challenging, let's go through the challenging, uh, at least what I've seen in Papua New Guinea and Cambodia is that the costing was starting much too late and we lost the possibility to, to be jointly working a costing and programmatic side. In the past, the CMYP was doing the costing after the CMYP, but um, obviously we are trying to have that much more synchronized. As soon as we got objective strategy, then we tried to cost them. Uh, we had difficulty to access financial data. Let's not underestimate it. it. Has always been the challenge. Not all financial data are in the end of EPI. We have to go to a Ministry of Finance, to the Treasury, to many uh, source of information. It took us six weeks for Cambodia to collect and process the financial data. So that's even more the reasons to be starting very very early. Unfortunately, in Cambodia, we didn't, was not able at the time it was presented uh, to finalize all the financing like it was in the past with the CMYP. Uh, it was done later on uh, when the FPP was starting. So that will be something that we need very much for any new country to think about the planning, the proper planning and ahead of time to do that properly. MOH, as you know, are extremely busy and all the partners, the COVID, the HSS reprogramming in many countries difficulty to put the NIS priority. And I believe if the country move with the NIS, to me, it's the highest on the list of the activity to be implemented. We decide for the next five to 10 years 
activities. And uh, the application has several technical issues, but that was the early versions. And I think Sorab worked a lot with Charu and with many colleagues in, in correcting. Next slide, please. In Zimbabwe, and that was some colleague which sent the slide, they were thinking it was very user-friendly in working with these versions of a, a DNIS. Um, they were still in progress and uh, they're still requesting some technical support showing that what Char uh, Sorab say that basically it's not simple to go through this tool on one time. So I think uh, what uh, Sorab Charu could continue to, to, to propose is to help countries. Zimbabwe had a few issue, technical issue, and I will leave that with Charu. On, she's going to mention that uh, with the framework uh, worksheets, but that is currently being solved by the team of Sorab. One very important thing is that you have still a few cells which are not fully protected because you have the possibility and the flexibility to change a few things. And uh, many of them are frozen, but some are left also for country if they would like to change some issues. So let's be uh, still a bit careful in the way you doing that. And so I've mentioned already that uh, basically um, you have a demo version so you can play with it. And then you have the, your versions that you can work with it. And um, Zimbabwe was also commenting on issue with some redundancy. As Ula mentions, this NIS dos cost is still on is, uh, let's say, um, refining, uh, let's say, stage. Ah, it's working well now, but still, whatever you have to bring to us, please let us know. Next slide, please. Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan is a challenging country, like many countries, like uh, which are, are transitioning from Gavi uh, funds, and especially uh, the challenging in uh, collections of data in the time com consuming. So that's what I insist already. Uh, the horizon for the five-year period, as um, Sorab mentioned, there is a possibility to look for the next five years, and that's also very challenging to make sure that you can get financial data for the year beyond the first year. Now, most of the country are all one year budget. So that's also some challenge that we are finding. That's not related to the tool. I'm insisting that we are speaking of the overall costing approach. Frequently changing costing and financing landscape. And uh, let's say the pandemic has been very much disrupting. And we have to think on the way. And Cambodia, to me, was a very good experience where we have maybe to integrate a little bit what we have learned with the COVID in recent years. One major issue that might be for further discussions, as Sorab mentioned, is the Google Sheet that we are using, but several countries and Uzbekistan is one of them which are absolutely challenged by the use of Google because this is not an official use. So they are playing with having accounts by some people which are third party. And we have to think on that. In most of the country, it's fine to be using the Google Sheet, but in some country, they might be having a need. So we are thinking currently uh, with the line with the uh, UNICEF on how we can solve this issue with country which are with difficulty to use the region. And I will finish with uh, with Uzbekistan and leave the floor to to Charu. Is that the capacity to conduct costing and financing? Sorry, just not move the slides. I, uh, yeah. And um, that's an important thing in terms of technical assistance. We are insisting on the fact that not only because country do not have the technical capacity is because they have often not the time. So I think I'm insisting very much for, uh, let's say this technical assistance. And the last point is the guidelines. They are currently uh, refined. At the time of Uzbekistan, they were not fully available. So Charu, the floor is yours. You're muted Charu. Thank you, Eric. We go into the best practices for processing the NIS costing. Uh, first of all, as I think all of us have been mentioning, you do need active participation from all stakeholders. It's a process with discussions, elaboration of the key structure of NIS is absolutely essential. And uh, we need to agree and share on the strategic decisions that are included in the NIS. So NIS is actually a complete and integrated process. We need to involve financing stakeholders, collecting financial information, processing the data, and then using the application for costing, budgeting, and financing. And finally, holding the budget discussion and negotiation as a part of the process 
while doing the NIS cost, costing full planning and not just the approach or the cost uh, de uh, deriving the costs. And along with this, we require NIS costing that it should start really in the beginning of the NIS development process, just when you are doing your uh, framework and in terms of you know what in objectives, interventions and activities are being done, it, you have to work in close synchronization because there's a lot of back and forth and it's a dynamic process. The principle is to have the rough costing estimates so that those cost estimates can be used for holding budget discussions because they are a part of the dynamic process and there might be some interventions once you find your final budget is very high, which we did find when we were working on Cambodia, some of the activities either were dropped or they were left for the later years. So it's a whole process which needs to go on together. So when Eric and I were working on this, we really found like how much changes happen while doing uh, both because Eric was working on the NIS part and me on the costing, what we had to change as we go on during the process. Financial data and information are key. So please, the NIS costing team needs to have a sufficient bandwidth to get data from all the sources, Ministry of Health, Finance, Treasury, Gavi, WHO, UNICEF. Uh, UNICEF as supply division has very good information, which was actually very useful for this. A national economist, as Eric mentioned, whether it could be a contracted consultant or an EPI uh, person is essential for collecting the financial data. The support of international experts is useful. And uh, as we have seen, at least the countries in the early stages, but we are hoping that capacity building in the training would uh, help in getting uh, like, you know, uh, country people to be actually using the tools. Next slide, please. Ownership and excess are very, uh, we have discussed this a little bit, Saurabh talked about it, like, you know, once a country has got the uh, country specific version, there can be only one person who can enter the data at a time, but they, he can share the application with any, any number of people, but it's preferable that one person is responsible to lead the data entry, though at, he can allow his colleagues to enter the data if required. Uh, the privacy issue actually it is uh, these these are actually country created files and so and version history remains so therefore you know like who has made the changes where it is done and demo versions are also available to play around orientation and technical assistance we have already talked about it, it has been given to the countries and there is a support icon on the tool you can continue to ask for support as and when you keep working on the tool uh, preparatory work is very important. It's very important to finalize the unit cost for rates before delving into the NIS dot cost uh, as later changes actually lead to duplicate work. So in setup, actually do put in all the information before you really go into uh, and at the same time, you know, you put in your framework, but start doing the costing after the setup information has been done. Uh, you need a coordinated work. With, with, between framework and dimensions, while that is being finalized by the NIS core team, setup can simultaneously be entered by the NIS costing team. Uh, there is a possibility to have offline Excel sheets. Uh, and the, the, we did have a situation when they were shared with the country, and the, but the information has to be pasted back later into the NIS to get the full uh, vision of the reports that we were talking earlier. Shared cost, I think Ulla has already discussed earlier, and it is in the dimensions tab and can be used very uh, usefully. Next slide, please. Uh, these are some technical aspects which we have faced and we just thought it's uh, useful to tell people like, you know, when you're doing this, how you can actually uh, take care of them. For example, deleting uh, or adding activities after you've done the framework, just remember to hit the recalc or update, uh, really updating the uh, framework. So people forget to do it and then sometimes it doesn't work. So uh, information, though budgeting is actually a part of the overall approach, but I when sort of was showing there was a budget for the past two years, they should be done while you're doing the setup because it's useful to know what are the government expense heads which will be needed in the costing for activities. 
do not delete formulas from the cells. As we said, like, you know, data has to be entered where there it is yellow. If you have a problem, you can always go back to the support and say like, I want to enter some data there and they will kind of remove it for you to do it. Uh, framework terminology, actually countries have told us- Karu, the, the interpreter says you should speak more slowly. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so the framework terminology has five, uh, like countries use, tend to use more than uh, three categories. The uh, tool currently allows us to use only three categories. So uh, you can use, uh, you can be innovative and put certain categories as a part of the framework. Uh, again, like uh, you have a, in setup, uh, you find a list which is already given but you can change whatever cost components are relevant for the country or the rate categories which are relevant. For example, uh, whether you're talking about rates for a consultant or for supervision or for a training, those anything what you want to do, those rate categories can be changed. Uh, again, a very important thing, since the reports are displayed at the activity, they, they are displayed even at the intervention level, but since the costing is done at the activity level, it's very important that uh, all the activities are done for which you can estimate the cost and sort of already showed, like you need to mention all the vaccine names, cannot say procurement of vaccines. You'll have to say procurement of vaccines, BCG, MMR, et cetera, et cetera. So I finish with this and I leave the floor to Ola, please, uh, for questions and answers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shiru. Yes, I've answered a few questions online, uh, but some of them are really best said uh, by us. I was just about to answer one about the French, whether we will have a French version. So yes, we will have a French and also a Spanish version, but we just, we want to, and so, how we're going to do it is that there are going to be different versions. It's not going to be so that you can choose your language. We will have a French version, a Spanish, and an English. But we just we're just waiting to make the last adjustments. You know, otherwise it's going to be extra work. So the answer is yes, but it's not ready yet. Um, then, if I could just um, that there are some there's a questions about. Um, from Mayora, she would like an example. So it's best for you to answer, Shiru. Um, she would like an example of, for instance, um, costing a workshop at national level. If you could just, Shiru, could you just say, I know you've done this already in the tool, um, just explain, we're not gonna show anything now. Like for instance, what would the steps be to cost a workshop at a national level? So, uh... Okay, so if you're costing a workshop at a national Sorry, level- Sorry, Ula, uh, Ula and Charu, instead of explaining, we may send some example. I mean, that might be much better. Yes. I think, yeah, I think we have different example and uh, Mayora, it will be much more efficient if we send you a couple of example of that. No problem, no problem. Okay, so another question from Aurora is, when you make adjustments on the tool, do those adjustments reflect in the tools we are working on? So the answer is yes, I'm not really sure I understand the answer. The question. So, Saurabh, I mean, adjustments. Yeah, everything is connected in the application. So, anything that you change in, for example, the roadmap module gets reflected in the costing module. Anything that you change in the costing module will automatically reflect in the financing and the report module. So, we have followed a linear approach in designing the application so that uh, the background uh, aspects are well connected and uh, updated on a real time. Okay, thank you. And then also for, for you, perhaps, Sora. So the question here is about the dimension. So this is, I think you might have been in contact with Cote d'Ivoire. So the question is, how do you add another dimension? I've recently participated in costing the NIA strategy in Cote d'Ivoire. And the challenge is that the NISA strategy has four dimensions, but the application only provides three. So this is a challenge. Uh, I know we've discussed it, but... Ulla, I can actually answer this. Mm -hmm. So in case of Cambodia, for example, we had again the same challenge that we had actually five of them. So there were objectives, there were strategies, interventions and activities, and actually even an overall goal was there. So of course we didn't put the goal in the thing, uh, in the tool, in the framework, but then we did put uh, uh, the 
uh, of strategies could be put under the objectives in the same cell. So we could see like, uh, you might have to just repeat the strategy twice if it is being said, uh, that is the way, but you can always have a sub, sub kind of a, uh, you can put it in the same cells that you can say strategy and then objective and then put it uh, together. So Ula, therefore it's mm. possible just as, you know, and you can repeat the same thing again. Ula, can I intervene here? I mean, we, yeah. we should, and we are discussing on the possibility to have more than three levels. And normally it should be for the next versions. I am very much, let's say, insisting on not playing with that as in Cambodia, it was really tricky for that. So I mean, very much in favor to leave the possibility for the country if they have five level, which could be, and then it's potentially in the next versions of dnis.cost. I'm not sure exactly when it will come, but that will simplify the life for whole countries. Yeah, so I think with regard to Cote d'Ivoire, because it's, we, we can't do it right now, we, we will be happy to help you um, yeah. with your specific issue. Um, Benjamin, and also Cote d'Ivoire. Try I and share, advise how to I, best do it. Yeah. Cote d'Ivoire, I shared already the Cambodia. So if you don't have this, so you can see it with the way we have done. I mean, Charu was right now mentioning, we can share with you and you can have a look. I mean, no problem. So just send a message and we'll send it to you. So okay, you can see. And same thing for Mayora. I mean, we can send to you what Charu developed in, in Cambodia for costing the workshops and all that. You will see detail. We have been using separate Excel spreadsheet in order not to overwhelm everything in the NIS.cost to have unit cost and all that. So that has been quite a lot of preparatory work to the NIS.cost. Okay, and then um, Igor has a question. What are the criteria to implement a pilot project on NIS in country? So specifically Cameroon. So it, we really, we, the more this is used, the better. So we are very keen. So we'll be happy to work with you. But of course, the main criteria is that the NIS is being updated. So because it has to be done alongside the NIS. So we hope that 2022 will be, will be really busy, that many countries need to update their CMYP and that they will choose to do it in an, according yes. to the new NIS guidance. And then we will be happy to work with you. Of course, there's limited capacity, but we're really trying to get it out. It needs to be used. Um, so please just get in touch, Igor, um, separately, and we will see how we can help. Um, and then there is a question from Anjari, how to factor in country specific needs. So, you know, everything needs to be in country specific needs. There's no pre-populated data um, in this application. So, so you have to put, and, the in-country specific needs, it really has to be, as we've said before, it has to be linked with what's in the NIS. You need to cost what's in the NIS. So in, if the NIS says, okay, we need to introduce HPV um, in two years time, you put that in and then you, the NIS.cost will, um, will help you estimate what it will cost to introduce HPV. And another strategy could be like, we need to increase coverage in urban slums and then nis.cost will use country specific data. This is why the, the person working on it needs to have some experience and be skilled. I mean, that is the issue. And the person needs to work very closely with um, the NIS development. So it needs Ula, to go hand in hand with the, with the NIS development. Ula, you may, you may add that basically in many country, you have already quite a lot of calculation in the HSS. Uh, should it be, for example, for HPV? Should it be for many? So we have been using that very much for populating the NIS dot cost. That's the, as old as data which in Gavi country. So what do you mean? Already... HSS, you mean HSS application? Or... Yeah, yeah, the HSS applications have been calculating a lot of activity which are relevant also to the NIS, and and the NIS normally should be a repository of all financial informations. And that's, that will be. And Ula, I'm not sure you have been covering the questions on the vaccines too. That was the second questions. Did you? Um, yes, I, I, I answered that in, um, okay. I've Sorry. written that, yeah. The type, I've typed that answer, yeah. But it was about whether it's hypothetical, okay. right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Everything should be country specific. I mean, so do you just want to talk about what is pre-populated? I don't think a lot of things are pre-populated. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, 
when we, I think the tool can be customized in country context, uh, in the set of module, you can uh, specify your own list of country specific uh, expense heads. You can uh, name your three levels that are kind of specific to your country. But then, you know, the, the tool is uh, very much open to, you know, adapt to your national immunization strategy. So I think it, it, it's very flexible to adapt in country context. I mean, if there is a very specific functional request uh, that is very specific to country context, uh, maybe it is not, but uh, in a general sense, uh, it's very flexible to be adaptable. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I can see, is it possible to have your email address and get this technical assistance for Cote d'Ivoire? Yes, so you will be sent, uh, after this, this presentation, everybody will be sent the slides and as I said, you need to go to immunizationeconomics.org. Uh, there, there you can you can um, automatically or you can click to get assistance. But I can also we can also just write email addresses in this chat now. That uh, that will be fine. And also, Ula, maybe you can say that uh, beyond purely the NIS dot cost issue, all the NIS issue we have. On one side, WHO and HQ, let's say with Natalie team, but we have also the UNICEF team with you and Charu and me, and we can reply to all uh, all questions that we that that countries may have and share also materials uh, that we have been already developed. Yeah, I've just put my email address in the chat, so please just get in touch with me, and I can forward it to any you know of, on our little team who who is the best person to um, to help. So please. Could you uh, just uh, please get in touch and we will we will help you out. Yeah. Okay, I don't see but any other question on the subnational level. And yes, the tool can be used at the subnational level also. So I guess, Charu, the way to do it is to have one tool for a state, right? And then no, no, it's I, I, like activities. I'm, I, I presume, like, you know, they are trying to ask if there are activities at the subnational level. And the dimension tab allows us to choose whether an activity is at national level or, or at the subnational uh, level. Or, or otherwise, what you said, you can have one tool for each subnational level. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's called NIS National Immunization Strategy. Yeah. So we are assuming that this is a national. Yeah level but, yeah. strategy but i guess nigeria if a state has a specific strategy for their immunization in the state then you can definitely do that yeah many countries are decentralizing Ula. i mean png was requesting already that cambodia at some stage too philippine also so uh, i think we should be ready for at least for, for for big province which are interesting to do their own work money start to come from the province okay so I think we are exactly on time now. Um, so I want to thank everybody for their participation. Ola, there is one more question. Oh, about, is there? Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, they're asking if the application can be linked to one health lives uh, saved to, to calculate uh, impact in terms of number of deaths uh, averted. Um, yeah. Okay, that's that's a big task to do that. Um, so, how many deaths averted the new NIS strategy could do? I I wouldn't say that our application here can be directed linked to that. I mean, to do that, you know, you really need to look at your strategy and say what's new in it. So that's a good thing with our application. You can say what's new. So if it's new that you're introducing a new vaccine, for instance, and then you want to know how much many deaths this new vaccine is averting, I actually wouldn't recommend to use the One Health tool for that because if it's AP, HPV, you need to do an, you need to use an HPV mathematical model to estimate that. And then death averted from increasing coverage, it's tricky these things. Again, I don't think One Health is ideal for that. Um, get in touch with me. I've worked a lot on these things in my, uh, before I came to UNICEF, I worked on cost effectiveness analysis. So, I can give specific advice, um, but it's a big task to do that, to add the health impact of a new strategy. Yeah. But get in touch, Ibrahim. I'll be happy to give you some advice. Okay. You have a question on Nyquist, uh, Ula? 
please is the tool linked to the list of equists? Okay, I don't see that. Okay, no, it's not linked to Equist. No, no. Great. I so. think we're we're on time. Um, we're going to wrap up this um, this webinar. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, that was a very informative uh, webinar. I will provide uh, the emails in the email that I will send to all participants and all everybody who actually registered, uh, so that if there's any question, they can join. Uh, they can join you. Um, well, so I would like again to thank participants and all our panelists for the for for their time and engagement. As a reminder, we'll send you the links to the recording and the slides by email uh, next week, probably. Uh, they will also be made available on the TechNet21 website. If you have more questions uh, that you wanted to ask directly to, um, to our panelists, you can join uh, the session on Thursday. There's another session on Thursday. And um, I will also um, uh, provide you with the emails uh, in case you need to contact, you, to contact the panelists directly. Um, so same session on Thursday, 4 p.m. Geneva time uh, with interpretation in Spanish and French. Thanks again, everyone. Uh, that was great. Uh, hope uh, you all have a, rest, a good rest of the day or evening and uh, stay safe. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.